All right, today's date is Monday, November 4th, 2019. We're talking about the, or I guess it's the remainder theorem, but the polynomial remainder theorem. Who can read the objective? India. Use the polynomial remainder theorem to answer questions about the remainder factors. There it is. So, um, who wants to read the polynomial remainder theorem, the actual thing that you're going to be using? You just have to read it. Go ahead and grab a golf pencil, please. Loria, please. All right, so if that kind of makes sense, but also kind of sounds like gibberish, then you are not alone. When I first looked at that, I'm like, what is that actually saying? So this is how I make sense of this. All the time, you're going to be dividing by some x minus a, like x minus 7, x plus 3. You're dividing by some linear pair. So if I divide by x plus 7, I plug in negative 7 over here, and that's the answer. That's the remainder, which means if I divide by x plus 2, I plug in that negative 2, if I plug in the negative 2, I get the remainder out. It's a quick and fast way to find the remainder. If the remainder is 0, what does that mean? If I plug in the remainder, if I say like, okay, I want x minus uh, 6, then I plug in positive 6, since this is a negative 6, I plug in positive 6, what if my remainder after I plug in 6 is 0? What does that mean if I have a remainder of 0? And we talked about this both on Thursday and Friday. A remainder of 0 means what? A remainder of, oh yeah? <laughs> a remainder of zero means that it is evenly divisible, that that is a factor. So if I say that, if I divide, for example, by x minus 2 and I plug in p of 2, I plug in 2 and I get out, oh, the remainder is zero, that means x minus 2 is a factor of that polynomial. It's really helpful to find if it's a factor. If you have a remainder of zero, you're a factor. If the remainder is anything else, it's not a factor. But you can't find the remainder after that. All right, so let's go through this. Example number one. Once I show you enough examples, you'll see, okay, I kind of get what's going on. You're just plugging in the opposite over and over again. That's the quickest way to explain it. Question? Can I have a pencil minus knowledge? Yeah, have you ever borrowed a pencil yet for me? You may grab a... Uh, erase your pencil and keep it permanently. The next time that you borrow a pencil, it will be a golf pencil. All right, so p of x is a polynomial. p of x divided by x plus 8 has a remainder of 5, etc., etc., etc. So if I plug in 8, which linear factor am I really dividing by? Am I dividing by x plus 8 or x minus 8? Quite raised hand for this one. It's pretty easy. I mean, you just kind of look at the formula here. p of 8 is quite raised hand. Who still has their card? Anyone? Oh, Ellery has her card x minus 8. So this p of 8 is talking about when I divide by x minus 8, which means the remainder is what, Ellery? Wait, say that again? Zero. So when I divide by, Sorry, I don't know what this polynomial is, but I know when I divide by x minus 8, I have a remainder of? 7. The answer is 7. I'm sorry, I didn't. And this is just using the remainder theorem. The value at 8, when I plug in x equals 8, I get a y value of 7. Or another way of saying this is when I divide by x minus 8, I have a remainder of 7. That's saying the same thing according to the polynomial remainder theorem. Let's try another one. P of negative 2. Who can tell me what P of negative 2 is? I'm looking for cards. Who has cards? I'm looking for cards. Jane, do you have your card? Uh, I don't have Weird. I might. I don't know what I Calling you, Jaden. I'll take your imaginary card then. I want to hear from you. Negative two. I don't know what we're doing, so. Okay, Cheyenne. It is indeed. Wait, so what did you say? Negative nine? Ooh, careful. So you have to switch the value. If it's negative two, I'm looking for positive two, which means the remainder is. Cheyenne? It is negative three. I'm looking for quite raised hands. That's why I'm ignoring you. Questions? Questions? Go. So I know that if I divide by a linear factor like x minus a, I switch the value from negative a to a positive a, I plug in that value. So if I plug, for example, let's, let's take a look at this one, x minus 8, that looks like x minus a. If I plug in positive 8, if I plug in normal a without the negative, 
then the remainder is the same thing as if I plugged in that value and I get out the height. Saying, if I go to this x coordinate, I know what the height is. It's saying, if I have, if I divide by x minus 8, I know what the remainder is. The polynomial remainder theorem says that the remainder is the same, the same thing as the y value. Once you see a few more examples, hopefully it'll be a little bit clearer, but if not, I can still come around and help us. All right, let's see another version of the polynomial remainder theorem. We have some polynomial graph below, and I want to know what is the remainder when I divide by x plus 3. So what value am I really plugging into the graph? If I'm dividing by x plus 3, what number, what x coordinate am I looking at? Beverly? Negative 3. So let's go to negative 3 and find the y coordinate. What's the y coordinate negative 3? Quiet raised hand. You're just reading a graph here. What is the y coordinate when I go to x is equal to negative 3? Quiet raised hand. Anna, five. 5. And there's the answer. The answer is 5. The remainder when I divide by x plus 3 is 5, which is crazy to think about. We used to have to use synthetic division, but this is saying you can skip a step. If you have a graph or you somehow know the inputs and outputs, I can tell you what the remainder is. Normally, the remainder is written like this, 5 over x plus 3. I'm just telling you that very last number is a 5 by the polynomial remainder theorem. Salud. Let's try another one. What is the remainder when p of x is divided by x minus 5? And if you're raising your hand now, you need to tell me what to plug in and what is the height when I get this out. What is the y value when I plug in that number? Colby. So what number do I plug in first? If I have x minus 5, I plug in 5. And when I plug in 5, I get the value of 4. Again, you're correct. So when I plug in 5, I come up to this point and I see, oh yeah, that height over here is 4. So the answer here is 4. Let me just give you another one, a random question that I can make up right now. Let's assume that I was dividing by x minus 3. Just a random question now. If I did x minus 3, someone talk me through that one. What is the remainder of that polynomial when I divide by x minus 3? Quiet raised hand here. If I divide by x minus 3, what is the remainder? I see three hands, four hands. Yeah, Caroline. Six. How'd you get that? You're correct. to a positive 3. So I come to positive 3 and then do what? You got this, Caroline. You try to find the y coordinate where this intersects the graph. This intersects the graph up here at positive 6. So look at the corresponding y value when x is equal to 3. Exactly. So when I divide by x minus 3, the remainder is 6. And you can write that one down as well. All right, let's try another example. Again, there's multiple, multiple forms. Is it a question, Anna? Yeah, how do you do it without a graph? Like in example three? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so we need to plug in that number. So I, I am now giving you a polynomial, not a graph, not a table, and I need to say, what is the remainder when I divide by x plus 2? And again, this one we could use synthetic division. That would give us our answer. But there's a shortcut to synthetic division. The shortcut is take the opposite sign, negative 2, and plug it in for the value of x. So someone tell me what to do. Basically regurgitate what I just told you to do. Anna. So p parentheses negative 2 times negative 2 plus 3 parentheses negative 2 squared plus 4 parentheses. Exactly. We're plugging in the opposite value right here, negative 2, very similar to synthetic division, and then we're just value, evaluating what that is. So if I have all of these numbers, I'll just plug them in for us. That means when I say P of negative 2, what is this value to the right? I need you guys to simplify this now. What is negative 2 to the power of 3? What is 3 times negative 2 to the power of 2? Simplify all that stuff to the right, you're done. All right. Who can walk me through this? I can work with you. If you have questions, I will help you along. India. Okay, so the first term would be, it, it would be negative 16 because you're going to multiply negative 2 times negative 2 to get positive 4, positive 4 times negative 2 to get negative 8, sorry. Negative 8, okay, good. Negative 6 times negative 6 is 36, 
careful here. So order of operations states we're oh. going to do exponent first. So let's do negative 2 squared first. That's going to be 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Perfect. Keep going. And then that's going to be negative 8 plus 7. Perfect. And then we see... Yeah, what's well, negative 8 and 7? Let's do that one. Negative 8 and 7 is negative 1. Okay, you want to do the negative 1 plus 12? Negative 1 plus 12 is 11. And then 11 minus 8. 11 minus 8 is positive 3. The remainder here is positive 3. Again, if you don't like using this shortcut for at least this one of the six types of problems, you can use synthetic division. You will get the same answer. This positive 3 is the very last digit you get in the bottom right of synthetic division. <coughs> Normally, we would write that as 3 over x plus 2. It's only asking for the remainder, so you don't need to leave it over x plus 2. I want you guys to learn math. Like, how are you going to learn if you're never challenging yourself? I want you guys to have a growth mindset. All right. Uh, any questions on one, two, or three? Anything? Same. So let's review. Again, we're starting up here with the polynomial remainder theorem. If, and you were just using the theorem, I would love to prove the theorem, but again, that takes so much time that I wouldn't have time to let you yeah, actually play with the math. Mindset. Okay, come to me after class. We'll definitely talk about it. So x minus a. If I divide by anything that looks like this form, x minus a, all I have to do is I take the positive version of that, I flip the sign, if it was a negative, make it a positive, if it was a positive, make it a negative, and plug it into the polynomial. That is the same thing as the remainder. That means the y value and the remainder are the same thing. I'll say that again. The y value, or the output, of the polynomial is the same thing as the remainder which is actually really cool in my opinion, but yeah, it's, it's harder to get there. So every single time I say, okay, well, what is P of 8? P of 8 means I have to be dividing by the opposite of 8, by negative 8. So if I do x minus 8, that remainder is the same thing as my output. This is asking, what is the output? The output is the same thing as the remainder. It says remainder of 7. I'll write it up here because there's a few different ways of writing it. Output is equal to remainder. Or y coordinate is equal to remainder. So this y coordinate of 7 is the same thing as the remainder of 7 because it corresponds to positive 8, switch the sign, negative 8. All right, so remainder, I'll get rid of all this stuff and write it again. All right, 4p of negative 2, I'm going to give this one to Lorea. How did we get negative 3 here? You explain it to us. Where, what do we have to do first? Which linear factor are we choosing between these four? Negative three. X plus 2. Good, you switched it. And this y value is the same thing as the remainder of... So you don't even have to do anything. The remainder... And it's asking for the y coordinate. This y coordinate right here is the same thing as the remainder. These two should match up. The remainder is the output. The remainder is the y coordinate. So the answer is just negative 3 again. All right, all right, all right. The remainder is the y. This is saying, whenever I say p of whatever, this is the y coordinate. So 8 minus 1 is 7, and 2 plus. You don't, have to do any, you don't have to do any addition. All you have to do is you have to switch the sign. So it becomes a negative 8, and look at the remainder, 7. You just plug it in, and I get 7. It tells you that it's 7. Again, down here, I had negative 2. You switch it to a positive 2. It says, oh, positive 2 corresponds to negative 3. So the answer down here is negative 3. So, Let's try another one. So, what, what is so <laughs> example number 2. So Aurelio, you're doing this one. X plus 3. What is the X coordinate that I need to plug in? Switch it. It was positive 3. Switch the sign. Negative 3. Negative 3 on the X axis. Negative 3 corresponds to what Y value? Look at the graph. I'll zoom in for you. Careful here. Take a look up here. I zoomed in for you. Look. Negative 3 comes up here. 
to 5. Again, I'm plugging in the value of the opposite to the linear pair. So the opposite of positive 3 is negative 3. I plug in negative 3, and I get the remainder. I get the y value. The y value and the remainder are the same thing. Same thing down here. x minus 5. I switch it to a positive 5. I plug in a positive 5. What is the y coordinate? The y coordinate will be the same thing as the remainder. The y coordinate is 4. The remainder that I'm looking for is 4. It is, yeah. I don't understand This down here. This would have been a graph. What x coordinate do I plug in to get the y coordinate out? If I get the y coordinate, the y coordinate is the same thing as the remainder. This is the y coordinate. If you don't like writing p of negative 2, don't write p of negative 2. Just write y equals. It's the same thing. What is the y coordinate that you get? Well, the y coordinate that you get, you have to plug in an x value. What x value do you plug in? The opposite of positive 2. I plug in negative 2. And then I have to do some math here. Was the math tripping you up at all, Jaden? Okay, so on problems like that, I'm just taking the opposite of that right there. Take the opposite of this, plug it in. And that's it. That's it. Okay, that, I get that. Okay, I'm so far, it's not pretty good. You don't got me stumped. Yeah. All right, let's move on to example number four. We're on the back. Now it gets harder. Okay, now I am good. <laughs> so, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. This is probably my fourth time today. If my remainder is zero... What does that mean? It's Yell it out, everyone. It's a factor. That means that my remainder has to be zero, or my y coordinate, this number right here, has to be zero. I'll write it off to the side because I haven't actually written it down anywhere. Remainder. Jane, that's inappropriate. <coughs> of zero <laughs> means it is a factor. I'll get you guys later. So that means my remainder, my y coordinate over here has to be zero, and I plug in a value for x. Someone give me a quiet raised hand. Give me the value of x that I'm going to be plugging in. Someone that has their card, someone that maybe doesn't feel too confident about this, take a guess. What value of x, and I'm giving you a giant hint here, what value of x do I plug in? It's the opposite of that. Come on, Brian. A positive 2, there it is. If I plug in a positive 2 everywhere you see an x, change it to a 2. C, 2 to the power of 3 minus 6 times 2 to the power of 2. Minus 2 plus 2. I have everything plugged in. I know it's 0 on the left because it says it needs to be a factor. That means the remainder is 0. The y coordinate is 0. And then from there, I'm just plugging in x equals 2. Let's see what happens here. Everyone shout these out. Let's try it. 2 to the power of 3 is? 8. So I have 8C here. 2 to the power of 2? 4 times 6? Negative. Yeah, and then you have the negative sign. So negative 24. And then I have minus 2 plus 2. Those just go away because 2 minus 2 is 0. So now I have 8C minus 24 is equal to 0. I'll pause here. Make sure that you understand all the steps to get here. I'm setting it equal to zero because I need it to be a factor. In order to be a factor, I need to have zero remainder. Zero remainder means I have a zero for a y coordinate. This is the y coordinate, therefore I'm setting it equal to zero. Question, Oscar. Did you get eight and negative So eight is two to the power of three. Two uh, times two times two is eight. And six is, yeah, six times two squared is uh, 24. Other questions? Did you have a question, India? Anna, question? Uh, how do you know that the remainder is zero? So you know that the remainder should be zero if it says it needs to be a factor. If this is a factor right here, then that means the remainder has to be zero to be a factor. Okay. So basically yeah. only if it says it has to Exactly, yes. Okay. Question, India. Yeah, if you felt like each one of these four people were shouting out the answer correctly, then you can give 10 XP per shout out because it's a procedure. So to everyone? Yeah, to everyone. Um, also, though, I should make it so that Leo's absent and he's not getting his XP. Sorry, Leo. I need his 10. It's okay. It's not going to affect him that much. All right. So from here, I'm going to solve. I'm going to add 24 to both sides, plus 24. 
plus 24. When I add 24 to both sides, I get 24 is equal to 8C. And then finally, I'm going to do what to both sides to solve for C, which is what I'm trying to do. Find the value of C so that this is a factor. No one knows how to undo multiply by 8. What is the inverse operation of multiply by 8? Oh my gosh, only three people know how to solve first month of algebra 1. Sam, yes, thank you. There it is. Divide both sides by 8. And C is therefore equal to what, Sam? 24 divided by 8? There it is. 3. Box it. We're looking for a value of C that makes it a linear factor. A value of 3 will make it a linear factor. So that's what, another type of problem you might have. And example 5 is the last and most lengthy type of problem that you will have on the homework tonight. We need to select all polynomials that are divisible by x plus 1. And another way of asking that is select all polynomials that have x plus 1 as a factor. They will ask this one of two ways. I put one of the ways outside the parentheses, one of the ways inside the parentheses. These are the two ways that we like to ask that question, that same question. Which polynomials are divisible by x plus 1 is the same thing as which polynomials have x plus 1 as a factor. So that means if I plug in what value, I'll have a remainder of what? If I plug in what value for x, I will have a remainder of what? Again, it's very similar to example number four. If I plug in what x value, I get what as a remainder. Only one person knows. That's not a good sign. You guys got this. You guys got this. It's very similar. What is the remainder? We'll start there. Easy lob question. I have it written up here to the top left. What should the remainder be if it is a factor? Quiet raised hand. Emily. Zero. That means... This side should be set equal to zero. This side should be set equal to zero. All the left-hand side, Emily is telling us, set that equal to zero. Now, what is the x value that I should be plugging into each and every one of these? Ellery. Negative one, because it's the opposite of positive one. So if I plug in negative one, I have two times negative one quantity cubed plus seven times negative one quantity squared plus negative one minus 10. And I need to simplify this. If this right-hand side is equal to 0, x plus 1 is a factor. That could be an answer. By the way, all four of these might be answers. It says select all that apply. Select all polynomials that are divisible. It might be more than one answer. So I'm going to do some really quick math with you. Whenever I have negative, anything negative to a power of an odd, is that going to be a positive or a negative? Shout it out. Negative. negative. If I have a positive to an odd, that's going to be what? That's going to be a positive. If I have a negative to an even power, that's going to be a positive. positive. And if I have a positive to an odd power, that's going to be a positive. positive. Your quick little cheat sheet. So you know just based on the signs, and then you can ignore the signs and focus purely on the numeric answer. So... My question for you is this. If I have a negative 1 to the power of 3, what is that? Negative 1 to the power of 3. You can use this little cheat sheet over here to the left-hand side if you want. I have a negative to the power of an odd. A negative to the power of an odd. Oh, I can see what that is. Negative 1 to the power of 3. Who's got it? Only two people. Yikes. We got this. We got this. Negative 1 to the power of 3. Quiet raise hand. Who's got it? Negative 1 to the power of 3. Chewy, help us. Save us. You got this, Chewy. Take off your hood, Chewy. I believe in you, Chewy. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Positive. Positive 1. There it is. So positive 1 times 2, that is going to become a positive 2. A uh, picture of Riley at the playground. And then negative 1 squared times 7. Beverly. Oh, so it's a negative 2? <coughs> Thank you. It's supposed to be a negative 1. Thank you. Negative 1 squared times 7. Shout it out. Just shout them out. We're going to get through this and be done with it. Shout it out. I get like the same three people participating over and over again, so we're just going to be done with it. It's 1 and then 1 times 7 is 7. 7. Minus 11, because negative 1 and minus 10 is negative 11. And what is minus 2 plus 7? 
5 minus 11. Minus this is equal to negative 6. So A is not an answer. If 0 is equal to 0, then it is a linear factor, exactly. Let's try another one. Again, we're just going to shout these out. What number am I plugging in again? The same number. I plug in again. Shout it out. Negative 1. I'm always plugging in negative 1 because I'm taking the opposite sign. So it's going to be 3 times negative 1 to the power of 3 plus 2 times negative 1 quantity squared minus 3 times negative 1 minus 2. All right. Simplify. Negative 1 to the power of 3. Shout it out. Negative 3. And then times 3 is negative 3. 2 times negative 1 to the power of 2 is positive 2. Negative 3 times negative 1. Minus 2. And when I combine all these, I have a positive 2, a negative 2, a positive 3, a negative 3. The answer over here is 0. B is an answer because 0 is equal to 0. We're trying to get 0 on the right. If you get 0 on the right, that is the answer, you're looking for something that is divisible by x plus 1, that means this polynomial is divisible by x plus 1. Let's try another one. Um, it, I just feel like... So is it making it more confusing by going too fast? Okay. Uh, let's just go to Khan it's just kind of busy work at this point. There's not even that much um, thinking. It's more just like trying to do calculations. You You're always plugging in minus 1. Minus 1 to the power of 3. You got this, Sam? <laughs> what is negative 1 to the power of 3, Sam? You got this. It is. And then what's negative 1 times 2? Yeah, negative 2. Perfect. Um, Aurelio, negative 1 squared. Um, Oscar, negative 1 squared. Yes. 1 times negative 3. What is 1 times negative 3? Thank you. Plus 4. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, plus 4 is negative 1, so it's not C. You're good. And our final example. I plug it in negative 1 yet again because I had a plus 1. I take the opposite. That is negative 1. I'm looking to get a 0 on the right-hand side. 5 times negative 1 to the power of 3 plus 8 times negative 1 to the power of 2 minus 19 times negative 1 plus 5. All right, let's go through this yet again. All right, at zero, are you ready? Negative one to the power of three. This one right here, negative one to the power of three. Say again? Yeah, you can do the second one. Chewy, negative one to the power of three. What is negative 1 to the power of 3, Chewy? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> negative 6. Oh. So, Chewy, if I have a negative to an odd power, it's a negative. And then a negative 1 times 5 is... All right. <laughs> At Ziri, help us out. Negative 1 squared. 1, one times 8? Say again? Uh, it's positive 8. Yeah, because it was positive 1 times 8. There we go. Negative 19 times negative 1. Everyone just shout it out. 19. Positive 19 plus 5. This is clearly not equal to 0 because negative 5 and 5 cancel each other out. Those go to 0. And 18, or sorry, 8 plus 19 is 27. 27 is clearly not 0. The correct answer is just B. Sometimes you will have multiple answers, though. All right. <coughs> Yeah, it's yeah. These types of problems take a lot of work, and I know it. What should we even write for summaries? Summary. 
Plug in the opposite, see if you get zero. I okay. mean, that's a good way. Don't do your summary now, though. Do your summaries later. Go, go down the curve so of forgetting. Right here. I was so Plug in the opposite. If I had positive one, plug in negative one. I mean, that's what you're doing over and over. You're plugging in negative three. I'm plugging in, yeah, it's just over and over again. Or you can say that the output slash y is equal to the remainder. That would be another thing to put in your summary. All right, that concludes the hardest lesson of unit four. Um, our test is coming up soon. Yeah, this is the last new thing I'm teaching for this unit.